It's a great pleasure today to have um, Insuk Seo uh, from uh, Seoul uh, giving a talk about energy landscape and metastability uh, for the easing model without external fee. Thank you. Yeah, before starting, like, may I have a question? So are you going to record this lecture or? I forgot to say, yes, the, the lecture will be recorded and it will be on YouTube if you agree. Ah. Okay, I see. Thank you. Then I should be more more careful. <laughs> okay, let me start. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. And today I'm going to speak about this metastability of aging model without external field. This is essentially joint work with uh, Sanu Kim, and I would like to thank him for. So large part of this slide is. Um, made by some, uh, this course or Sanu Kim, and I would like to thank him for sharing his slide. So let me start with the uh, introduction for aging model. Probably most of you know this model, but I'm going to introduce my notation today. So yeah, uh, to the aging model considered that today will be a aging model constructed on the two-dimensional lattice uh, with the bound periodic boundary condition. So, and uh, here K might be a fixed number, which might be large, but fixed. And okay, sigma here stands for the um, spin configuration, where sigma X denotes the spin at site X. And we define easing Hamiltonian as in the usual way and easing measure is defined in the uh, in this way as well. So we assign plus or minus for each side. And uh, I would like to look at the dual lattice and paint each dual lattice according to whether the spin is plus or minus. So if the spin is plus, then I will paint this, uh, it, uh, this square by orange color. And we will look at this configuration and this kind of a figure for each configuration. There is absolutely no confusion with this notation. And we do not buy box plus the configuration filled with plus pins on it. So this entire orange configuration will be denoted by plus, box plus, and the box minus denotes the empty. empty in some sense, empty configuration because all the box will be white under this configuration. The point is that by the symmetry, we can assume that this external magnetic field H is uh, non-negative. Mm -hmm. And if H is strictly positive, then we can easily notice that this box plus configuration is the ground state because the first part is minimized when the configuration is monochromatic in the sense that all the spins are same, so that this part becomes zero. Uh, so this plus and minus are a nice candidate for the minimizer of H, but because of this external field part, this plus configuration is the ground state, while the minus configuration is just metastable. So I'd like to mention that when you are computing this first part of the Hamiltonian, this first part can be computed from this figure by computing this perimeter of the lead cluster. And uh, using this um, convention, we can easily understand the global dynamic associate with this easing measure. So usual globe dynamic considered in this, uh, this context is the metro continuous time metropolis testing dynamic. So if you are, your configuration uh, looks like this, you will, um, okay. You did not buy sigma X, the spin obtained from sigma by flipping, flipping the spin at site X. Mm -hmm. And we are going to flip the spin at site X with this rate. Uh, as usual, this is metropolis testing late. And interest, the most important thing is that if sigma X has more energy than sigma, then this term will be the minimum one and therefore late will be exponentially small. 
if beta is large, right? So the jump uh, from lower, uh, low, lower configuration to higher configuration is very hard if beta is large. On the other hand, if sigma x has uh, the same energy or, or um, so the energy of the sigma x is not larger than sigma, then this one will be minimum. So this jump will be happen in order one rate. For example, if you are trying to fill, uh, flip this side, then this does not change the parameter of the lead cluster, which means that, so suppose that H is zero, then so that uh, the parameter is the energy, then if you flip this side, then it does not change, increase the energy. So it will happen with the rate one. While if you try to change this side, uh, flip this side, then it will increase your energy by two. So the rate is exponential minus two beta, which will be exponentially small, provided the beta tends to infinity. So in the zero temperature regime. So in the low temperature regime, this dynamic tends to lower the energy. And uh, of course the easing measure defined in the previous slide is the invariant measure associated with this dynamic. Indeed, it is reversible with respect to yeah, uh, this uh, easing measure. Okay. In this uh, situation, this minus configuration and plus configurations are metastable in the sense that if you, suppose that you are here, all the uh, spins are minus. And if you try to make a plus of plus uh, spins in the C of this minus spin, then you always have to increase the energy and it's very hard. So you will try to form a small cluster of the plus uh, sign, but it will be disappear immediately because increasing the size of cluster is exponentially hard while decreasing the size of cluster is order one. So you will return to this original configuration. Therefore, jumping from this metastable configuration, minus configuration to plus configuration or plus configuration to minus configurations are exponentially hard. And this is a signature of metastable behavior. So we want to study this metastable behavior. For example, we want to uh, see how long does it take in order to make this transition from minus configuration to plus configuration. Okay. To see that we are going to start by reviewing the model with non-zero external field, which is a very famous work uh, from 90s and uh, carried out in 90s. So let's assume that there is a positive uh, external uh, magnetic field H. So that, as I mentioned before, minus configuration and plus configurations are metastable, but plus one is the stable one because it is a ground state. <laughs> While minus configuration is uh, stable, but it is not ground state. So in order to make transition from minus configuration to plus configuration, you have to increase the energy and you have to close uh, climb the mountain and uh, you have to pass through the saddle configurations to reach the plus configuration because you have to increase your energy in order to escape from the belly surrounding minus configuration. And this saddle configuration is the one minimizing this uh, uh, escaping energy. So what you have to do in order to use large, for example, large deviation or Fredlin eventual theory to estimate this uh, for, uh, ex expectation of uh, transition time, for example, you have to characterize what the in energy barrier is. Energy barrier is the um, energy difference between this uh, metastable configuration and set configuration. Therefore, in order to compute this energy barrier, it is important to, to characterize what are the set configuration is. And that is um, studied by Neves and Shaman. So in this problem, the critical drum net is uh, completely characterized by this shape. So if H is positive external field, and then you can co compute this LC and the critical drum net is uh, defined as uh, configuration of this shape in the, so this 
this this shape of plus cluster uh, in the C of minus cluster where this one is L minus L. So this side is LC minus one and this side is LC. And you attach a small uh, one, this protuberance attached to this uh, rectangular, then it is a critical drum net. Which means that in order to make transition from minus configuration to plus configuration, you have to form this uh, conf exactly this configuration. And from minus configuration to this configuration, you increase the energy, but from this configuration to plus configuration, you will decrease the energy. Um, Okay. Can, can, I, can I ask you sure. a, a yeah. question? So, so here you're considering beta very, very close to zero, right? Uh, very close to infinity. Infinity, right? yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah. this one does not have anything with uh, beta. It is the structure of H. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I was I was thinking that the critical droplet would be something like a valve shape, but uh, the, the, the valve yeah. shape comes to be a rectangle mm -hmm. only when beta is really large, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. It's a beta infinity regime. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So in this beta infinity regime, uh, so this energy value is computed as uh, energy of this configuration minus um, uh, this minus configuration. Uh, so this uh, ga uh, gamma star is the energy barrier, which is the energy gap. And then using large deviation theory, we can compute to uh, prove that the heating time of a plus configuration starting from minus configuration is um, located between exponential, so the, this exponential term and this exponential term as beta goes to infinity. And as beta goes to infinity, this expectation satisfy this uh, large deviation type estimate. And if you normalize this um, transition time divided by its mean, then you did, it is converges, it converges to exponential one random variable. So these three can be proven if you can analyze uh, the energy landscape so that if you can compute energy value and if you can compute to the, if you can characterize all the deepest values of this en energy landscape, then you can immediately deduce two, three, and four. Not immediately, but yeah, there is a robust theory. And it is done by Neves and Schumann. As far as I know, these two people are Brazilian mathematician, I'm not pretty sure. Okay. Uh, it has been significantly improved, um, uh, improved in this paper by Vobi and Manjo, which shows that so this, uh, they, can, they provide a very sharp estimate on the exponent this mean transition time. So they prove that this means transition time is essentially e to the beta gamma, which is exponential term, and the prefactor is given in this way. So this is a refined version of uh, this part three. And in order to refine uh, the estimate of the mean transition time in this way, we have to rely on the potential theory or, uh, or something equivalent to very high level of uh, mathematics and along with uh, more precise knowledge about this energy landscape. But yeah, yeah, this is known for this um, model with the positive external field. You can even analyze uh, in the three dimensional case. In three dimensional case, you can again find the shape of the critical drum net your critical drum net is now, uh, so I would like to uh, highlight that this part is the two-dimensional critical drum net. So if you attach a two-dimensional critical drum net at a huge rectangular cube, then you get the critical drum net in three-dimensional case. Uh, and using this, uh, Benaros and Sof shows uh, the same thing. They can compute, uh, this energy value and uh, deduce the three, the same estimate as before. 
And using Vobie Manjo technique, you can also compute Erin Kremers' law, which is sharp asymptotic of this exponential I mean transition time. And um, the main difference for 3D model uh, compared to two-dimensional model is that the energy landscape is much, much more complicated and uh, have a lot of dead end in the analysis. And because of that, the, the, the understanding of three-dimensional energy landscape is not so perfect. And uh, we are not able to proceed to the four dimension mainly because of that. So in order to analyze three-dimensional case, you at least have to know two-dimensional case in a perfect manner, but you don't have a perfect information about three-dimensional case, so it's hard to move to the four-dimensional model. So this is what has been done in the uh, 20 years ago about the model with the non-zero external field. So not if you, external field is positive, you observe this uh, form of energy landscape. And the most important thing is that this saddle is completely characterized by critical drum net. And therefore you have a very sharp saddle structure. You have to go to this uh, critical drum net. Uh, if you hit the critical drum net and then you start to decrease your energy to immediately converges to plus configuration. However, if there is no external field, which means that if there is uh, no H is equal to zero, now this minus, then without this term, minus configuration and plus configurations are completely symmetric. And it turns out that the saddle structure is no longer sharp, but has a huge plateau structure looks like this. So, if you reach the energy variable, then even after that, you have to spend a long transition with the same energy level in order to reach the next, uh, another metastable point. And it is a huge difference between this positive external field and zero external field case. So point is that there is no critical drum red in the zero external field case and entirely different approach is required. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the said has a huge plateau and uh, I would like to stress that she's uh, previously plus is the only stable point. Uh, and therefore you are concerned on the transition from minus to plus. However, now these minus configurations and plus configuration have the same energy level and they are symmetric. You will observe a successive transition between minus and plus. And therefore, in order to describe this metastable behavior when beta tends to infinity, uh, you need to describe this successive transition as a Markov chain, non-limiting Markov chain, after suitable time descaling. And that is additional, uh, object in this uh, study of zero external field case. Okay. Let me explain what happens in zero external field case. In order to make this transition from minus configuration to plus configuration, there is a, a canonical way of uh, making transition, right? So suppose that the side ranks is K and then what happens is that you first feel you take one line and successively fill this first line. You can take a random line and then fill that line. And then starting from there, you attach a protuberance at that line and increase this protuberance to fill the second line. And then third line and so forth. In this way, you can fill all the, uh, all the boxes starting from empty boxes to the full box. This empty box is the minus configuration while this full box is plus configuration. So in this transition, you can notice that the configuration is with the maximum energy is 2K plus two, because uh, since we are uh, looking at periodic boundary condition, the energy is the boundary of this cluster, which is this one. Since the size length is K, so this part is K, 
and summation. Uh, okay, summation of this part, this part, and this part is k, and you have additional two. All right. So all this configuration in the bulk has the energy two k plus two. So initially, it started from energy zero, four, eight, and increased to two k. So here zero to two k, and since then. You spend a huge amount of uh, time in the configuration of energy 2k plus 2 or sometimes 2k. 2k in the sense that this, this type of configuration has energy 2k. So we will say that these configuration here are regular configuration and all the other configurations are called canonical configurations. So if you are looking at this transition, canonical transition, you can observe that energy barrier is at least, so at most 2K plus two, since there is a way to make transition without touching a configuration with energy larger than 2K plus two. And what has been proven by Nardi and Joka is that this is indeed energy barrier. And based on that, they showed the, the same estimate as before, this uh, exponential concentration uh, of the heating time, low, uh, large deviation time. Okay, let us go back to the major point. The large deviation time estimate for the mean transition time and uh, this limiting char characterization of the limiting law. So, the main difference uh, of this model compared to the model with positive external field is that here energy barrier depends on the size of the lattice. If K is the size of lattice and if K increased, then the energy barrier is increased as well. In the previous case where the positive uh, external field is considered, the energy barrier was a function of L C, which was uh, just uh, divided. In the previously, the uh, this configuration has side ranks L C, which is H divided by two, uh, two divided by H. So the en energy is independent of the size of the uh, uh, lattice, but depends on the, the, the magnitude of the external field. It is one of the main difference between this positive external field case and the zero external field case. Okay, this is good. So in order to do that, as I mentioned before, uh, we have to prove this energy barrier. If we can prove the, this, uh, this first one, and if you are able to prove that the deepest belly in these energy landscapes are e either this one or this one. So namely, there is no other metastable valley deeper than this one. Then you can immediately get two, three, and four. But in order to get more precise uh, estimate on, for example, this uh, mean transition time to get adding Kremer's formula, you need much more precise level of understanding of the energy landscape. And that, that is what we have been doing in our paper. So look at this. The previous theorem says that in order to make transition from this empty space, empty configuration to full configuration, you have to climb this energy level of 2K plus two. What we can show is that we indeed has, have a, this kind of fix picture in this transition, where this point, this full point corresponding to this regular configuration. So we show that if you start from empty configuration, then what you have to do is first form two lines of a plus configuration, and then three, four, five lines, and then you complete. So five here means the seven minus two. So you have to fill the uh, boxes except for two lines, and then you will go to the uh, full box. Notable thing here is that you have to fill in these two lines and K minus two line, but making transition from this empty configuration to, in order to make this, conf so 
transition from empty configuration to these two line configurations, you do need to hit this one line configuration. That is important feature of two dimensional model. So, but if you are, if you live this two dimension, two line configuration, then there is no option. You have to follow this canonical way of making transition from this two line to five line. So in the previous picture, let's go back. To, oh, sorry. So if you, um, if you are live, if you are live here, then you have no choice until this uh, uh, until this configuration. From here to here, you have to follow this canonical way. But point is that from here to here, you don't need to follow this canonical way, and from here to here, you don't need to follow this canonical way. But in the bulk of transition, this canonical way is the only way to do that mainly because there is no way because the energy then energy is 2k plus 2 so the only way of updating this three line configuration is to fill a configuration here and then you cannot do in this way so oh yeah okay the previous the only way to not to increase energy is to cancel this update or adding a plus configuration here and plus configuration here. There is no way to do other uh, things. So that is the point. And if, okay, so that if in order to make a, a two line configuration to three lines configuration, the only way is to in, attach a protuberance and then increase it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but let me ask you, can't you go uh -huh. back? Go back? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, you can... when you reach one of these two uh, configuration 2K, can't you go getting back one plus into a minus? Yeah, sure, sure. You can do For example, you can do this uh, transition and then <clears throat> by removing this one, you can go to other canonical configuration with the two. Uh, size of two protuberance are located at different locations. No, but I'm asking the number of lines or columns can't decrease also in? Yeah, sure, sure, you can. Okay. Yeah, you can. So the point is that, however, it is uh, something like a simple random of, there is a simple random of structure behind this one from these uh, two lines to five lines. Because in this two line configuration, you can, either attach uh, protuberance or remove. Um, so it, it is another protuberance of white color, but you can, so, and they have the same probabilities. It is a random mock in the space of uh, in the park. However, difficult thing happens when you consider this edge part of transition. And uh, there is a uh, various non-canonical way of uh, uh, making transition from this MT1 to uh, two-line configuration. For example, okay, they are canonical configuration with energy 2K plus two. However, there are another, a lot of another configurations. So I don't want to compute the energy of these DG configurations, but they have energy 2K plus two. So the reason is that, so we can show that Mm -hmm. If the energy, so if this empty site consists uh, is, uh, if we draw the, this corresponding graph for these as empty site, and if these graph, this graph is three, then you can show that energy is two k plus two. So from here, if let's suppose that you arrive a uh, you start from minus configuration to reach a configuration with energy to k plus two, which means that one of these uh, this kind of configuration. Then from here to here, you are doing some uh, random walk in the space. You are performing a random walk in the space of the subtree of ladder graph. So this is a sub. These graphs are subtree of ladder graph and. Uh, for example, you can go from here to here because they have a new, you can update this 
a square to get this one. So in this uh, complicated space of tree, sub trees, uh, and if you suitably define a random up on these space, then you can completely describe what is doing, uh, what uh, happens in this regime when beta is sufficiently large. You can visualize this energy landscape in this picture. I, I'm not a big fan of this picture, but I have to explain it because it will appear frequently in the later part. So this is uh, this blue part explain the canonical uh, transition. So starting from minus configuration to plus configuration, as I explained before, you frequently have to visit configuration with 2K plus two. So gray part denotes the configuration with energy 2K plus two, while green part uh, denotes configuration with energy 2K. So if you arrive this uh, configuration with two lines or five, then you have to follow canonical configuration to reach this five line configuration. But in order to reach from empty configuration to this um, two line configuration, of course you can follow this canonical way, but there are other way, other complicated non-canonical ways to arrive in here, which is characterized by this random work on the subtree uh -huh, structures. So this illustrates how what happens in this uh, transition. So using this full characterization of energy landscape, we finally compute this uh, adding Kramer's formula, which provide a sharp asymptotic for this mean transition time from minus to plus or plus to minus. So we show that there is a constant gamma satisfying this relation. And we, we can write down what the gamma is in terms of the quantity related with this random work on the, on the space of subtrees, but there is no simple form, but at least we can compute what is the limit of the gamma K. If you send K to infinity, gamma K converges to one over A. And this complicated uh, uh, thinness of gamma appears because of our uh, complicated this fundamental complicated behavior appears in this part and this part. Mm -hmm. And the proof is again based on the potential theoretic approach along with the uh, generalized Thompson principle developed recently in another paper. So, yeah. I, I have a, a question. So you, mm. you seem to, 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 to say that in order to, to, to get this asymptotic result, this sharp asymptotic result, you only need to know what's, what's happening on the, on the edge of the slope. And you, you, don't, you don't really care how, how you get to this first configuration of, of uh, maximal energy. So, so wh wh why, why is that so? Um, so I'm going to say is that. In the, in the blue region, I think in your picture in this, yeah, I know with in addition to blue region. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, if you so this uh, fi figure is uh, provide a full characterization of en configuration with energy less than or equal to two k plus two. So transition must happen in this region if beta is sufficiently large. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that here you have a exotic configurations, right? So for, you can make transition in this way. Mm -hmm. So you have to take into account and for example, they are, oh, sorry. Yeah, this type of configuration should be considered as well. And then because of that, this, uh, this gamma is complicated. In the bulk of transition, gamma is very good. The, the dynamic is very clear in this simple symmetric random walk. However, in the edge of the transition, they are random walk in the space of subtrees and therefore they are 
cannot be written in the uh, concrete way. But the as k tends to infinity, the this limit implies that as tends k tends to infinity, this edgy effect is uh, negligible compared to the this work uh, part because you spend most of your transition time in the work because the length of this configuration is k minus two. Uh, the, 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 this transition k minus four, for because you start from two lines and uh, you arrive to k minus two lines. So it takes, you have a huge tube between these two. So, uh, to the metastable belly. So in the end, uh, this uh, bulk part dominates the mean transition time. And that is what I'm saying here. Yeah. This, uh, this answer for your question. Uh, yeah, my, my part was that you, you the, the, basically what, what what you were saying? What was the thing about the edge? Was 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 about the thing that how you get from the the, the first to the second stripe? Okay, okay, mm -hmm. a bit schematically, but okay. So it, it seems this is the important point, and the way you get to the first stripe, you don't care. It's not it's not relevant in the analysis. Yeah, you can you you, you don't need to hit this one. Stripe configuration in order to in order to get yeah okay for example you can make this configuration fast and then feel this way and this way then mm. you don't uh, touch one line configuration so there are a huge number of possibilities. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, I think that now I understand. You. You. You're saying that anything that happens before you reach energy two k is not important because reaching energy two k will be fast anyway. So anything yeah. below energy two k, you don't care about. This, this yeah. was. This was. Uh, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So similarly, we can show that uh, the the this metropolis. If you, since you have a exact transition scale. So if you speed up your process by a factor of uh, e to the beta gamma, you get a Markov chain between minus and plus with a jump rate given it this way. I don't want to explain the detail of the mode of convergence, but so, yeah, but you can uh, show this Markov chain convergence of this metastable jump and um, I'd like to stress that uh, this argument can be applied to, to the patch model with Q spins or using patch model on the lead, uh, like not the square, but rectangular K times L. Uh, and um, in this argument, we explain in terms of a free uh, periodic boundary condition, but free boundary condition can be uh, handled uh, by the same argument. And we can even handle the triangular lattice as well. Okay. Now I would like to briefly mention what's happening in the three-dimensional case, which is much more difficult than before. So let's assume that now each model is considered on the three-dimensional rectangular. Then as before, we can uh, explain what is the canonical transition from empty configuration to full configuration. So you feel, each plane by plane in a two-dimensional way to reach the three-dimensional configuration. So you first fill the first mm, uh, floor in a two-dimensional canonical way, and you can fill the second floor in two-dimensional canonical way and so forth. In this transition, the configuration with maximal energy is this sort of configuration, which is um, obtained by a rectangular, and uh, attaching a two-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional this uh, canonical configuration on top of the rectangular. So if KL, as before, let's focus on the case when KLM are same. In the case, this configuration have energy two K square plus two K plus two, two K plus two coming from is coming from the 
perimeter of the, this configuration, which is the two-dimensional energy barrier, and 2k square is the, coming from the, uh, the area of the, this, uh, this square and the square on the top. So you can easily expect that this is um, optimal trans transition path and the uh, energy barrier is 2k square plus 2k plus 2 and k and l are k l m and r k l m are equal and that is exactly what we have been uh, established in our paper and each proof is very very complicated uh, but we show that energy barrier is this one and therefore as before we immediately have the same estimate this characterization of energy barrier is uh, difficult because it and it, it is not a probability problem this is essentially a combinatorics problem and a lot of combinatorial argument is required in order to characterize this energy barrier and we show that there is no values, metaphysical values, uh, whose uh, depth is uh, larger than this number 2k squared plus 2k plus 2. Okay, we can even handle general case. If k, l, m are not equal, then we have this uh, form of uh, energy value. And we also have the energy value for free boundary k case and the patch model case as well. But let's now focus on this. Uh, cube case. Mm -hmm. In this cube of case, uh, we can also show Erin Kramer's formula. And as before, gamma cannot be written in explicit way, but has a, we don't know what the limit of gamma k is. And this limit of gamma k might be different for the other cases, but that is not important. The important thing is how to show this type of waste made in the three dimensional case. It's before we need to understand the, uh, what happens in the uh, in the in the center of the saddle plateau, and the, of course we can uh, get this Markov chain convergence uh, as before. So now explain what is the difficulty in three-dimensional case. This is the two-dimensional picture that I mentioned before. So remember this two-dimensional picture. So three-dimensional picture looks like this. And the main difference is that, so now in as in this picture, gray configurations are and the configuration with the maximum energy and green configurations are configuration with energy in this interval. The main difference is that here you have to, in this canonical, this, this figure illustrates this canonical transition. And in the center of canonical transition, you visit this conf configuration whose energy is exactly 2K square. So I, sorry, this type of this 2K square. So it, this is 2K square because the energy is the sum of the area of the these two faces, so this is 2k square. Point is that you have a lot of room from this configuration because uh, energy barrier is 2k square plus 2k plus two. So you have 2k plus two freedom. So you can do a lot of things. For example, you can make a plus configuration here, which is not probability problematic at all. But in the 2k case, Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, if you live here, it has energy 2K, which is uh, already very close to 2K plus two. So you, there is no choice. You cannot update something like this because it will increase you the energy to 2K plus four. However, here you have a lot of choice and therefore you will get a huge neighborhood of this configuration and there will be a lot of dead ends attached to this configuration. So you have to analyze this uh, neighborhood of this configuration and dead end. But the uh, good news is that once you, the transition between this uh, regular configuration between two regular configuration is completely two dimensional. So there are dead ends, but 
provided that you follow the correct way, then your transition looks exactly like a two-dimensional canonical transition. And that is a good news. Okay, the, what is the main difficulty is that, so the, this is not a huge difficulty, but the main difficulty is that um, the previously, you remember that this number two plays a crucial role as uh, Hubert asked before, from MT configuration, you can make these uh, two strip configurations without uh, touching, for example, one strip configuration. There are a lot of uh, non-canonical way to reach this configuration. However, in order to reach this three strip configuration, you have to follow the canonical transition, canonical pass from two line configuration to three line configuration. Okay. Here in this three dimensional case, we don't know what is should be this uh, this nk. So nk is the maximum i such that we can fill i's plane, i planes uh, in a non-canonical way. So in the previous two dimensional case, this number was two because you can fill two dimension uh, two three configuration without using canonical paths, but in order to make three, three strip configuration, you have to follow the canonical way from two line configurations. So here we conjecture that NK is asymptotically K to the one over two, but we are not able to prove that. But we proved that this is the following lower bound and upper bound. This is enough uh, for, it is, uh, this, the proof of this part is very complicated and difficult. And if you are able to show this, then we can use the fact that each transition is two dimensional uh, to uh, analyze what's going on. For example, if NK is of order K, then you cannot neglect this edge effect anymore. So it will be much more difficult, but we can show that NK is uh, smaller than K. So um, that uh, effect here can be negligible. So it is uh, need answers for three dimensional case. Okay, let me, within five minutes, what's happening in the growing lattice model. So previously we considered the two dimensional lattice and three dimensional lattice, but they are fixed. Here K is a large number, but fixed. Our condition, for example, our condition in the case uh, should be larger than something like thousand, some number like that. But here now, let's consider model when k grows to infinity. See if you consider the model with this growing lattice, the problem becomes much harder, and uh, this uh, positive external field case has been analyzed in. Bobier, then Holanda, and Spitoni. But our concern is uh, to look at this problem when h equal to zero. So in this, uh, in this regime, in this large volume regime, we have to send the k and beta to infinity together. But, and we want to know uh, in what happens if they are sending, uh, if you send if we send them together to infinity, so in view of this uh, h function, whether k is larger or not, the energy landscape has the same uh, shape because this is graph in some sense graph of h for fixed k, and even if k is grows to infinity, you have the same picture. So, oh, it's good news, and we know what the energy barrier between minus configuration to plus uh, configuration is. The main difference is that in the previous case, you can neglect all the configuration whose energy is larger than 2k plus two because k is fixed and beta ten, uh, sent to infinity. Therefore, energy is the only dominating factor. The configuration here can be negligible if you send beta to infinity because they have exponentially smaller energy than the configuration we do in this. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know how to say within yeah, this uh, this this neighborhood of minus configuration and plus configurations. 
However, now you, you cannot neglect this uh, configuration outside of this because since k grows to infinity together, the number of configuration here will be explode to infinity uh, in an exponential speed together. So now you have to take into account uh, how the number of configuration here increases and the relationship between them. So namely, <clears throat> you have to now look at the conf uh, competition between energy and the entropy. Previously, there was no entropy, entropy, but now you have to uh, consider this entropy effect. So, so the first question is that is uh, really is mu beta really concentrated on the valleys around plus energetic valleys around plus and minus? But even this question is not trivial at all in this situation. And first result shows that. Yes, the, indeed, they are concentrated on plus or minus configuration when uh, this uh, speed <coughs> is satisfied. K increased to infinity, but slower than e to the to, to, to theta. Then um, we can show that this is um, uh, this ground uh, uh, Gibbs measure is uh, concentrate on the Gibbs measure. And we can show that with a slightly loose condition, we can show that Gibbs measure is concentrated on this set, which it, here Xi denotes the configuration with energy I. So this is the configuration. And therefore this is configuration whose energy is less than CK to the two alpha. <laughs> So, but we can show that with the, the first result here, you can show that if beta is uh, larger than or equal to uh, essentially one over half of log k, uh, then uh, these plus and minus configurations are metastable. They are constant, major is concentrated on there. So this is huge condition because if you consider what k in mind is something like 10 to the 23, right? So, but the, the beta is uh, logarithmically larger than k, then uh, logarithm of k larger than logarithm of k, then we have a concentration of measure. So if you, interesting thing is happens when you insert alpha here to one half, then this will becomes k, right? So, and you can take any shape, so, and since gamma, the energy value is uh, two k plus two, so that uh, we can conclude that beta is larger than this one, then energetic values around plus and minus are met metastable. Energetic values, the, the, the in, when you are looking at the graph of H, then this one and this one are energetic value. And, and the, Almost the sufficient and necessary condition is uh, this. Mm -hmm. So we first characterize uh, when, so without this uh, characterization, there is no reason to consider metastability. So we first have to characterize uh, this condition. And uh, the proof of this fact is entirely combinatorial. We have to look at this uh, count. The, we have to estimate the number of configuration in the specific energy and we have upper bound and lower bound. So we can show the previous uh, share with this upper and lower estimate, which is carried out by complicated computation, com combinatorial graph counting argument. So with this one, and uh, uh, we can show that uh, adding Kramer's formula and Markov chain convergence as before. Uh, but here I would like to mention that our uh, this adding gamma formula and Markov chain convergence can be proven under uh, suboptimal condition because in previous slide we showed that metastability. So if you look at this uh, this uh, graph of H, and the measure is concentrated on these two values when k is less than or equal to uh, k is. Uh, slower than e to the four beta, but here we prove that k, these theorems when k is less than e to the beta divided by three. So it is a lot more, a lot suboptimal than our necessary and optimal condition. So the reason is that the big uh, reason is following. 
in order to prove this kind of uh, theorems, we have to construct a test flow and a test function and test flow, uh, which reflect the behavior of the dynamics in the in behavior of met metropolis testing dynamics in order to use this potential theory. But previously, we, for example, set test function as zero here and one here and reflect what, what's going on in the bulk in, the, in this tube. But now you have to carefully define the test function in outside of uh, the domain, which means that you have to understand what's going on in what's going on, what happen, what's happening in the outside of this, uh, this uh, neighborhood. And that is the difficult part. And since we, of course, there are exponentially many configuration outside of this, uh, this, this set, and the relationship among them is uh, fairly complicated. So it is almost impossible to understand, completely understand what's going on there. So this lack of understanding outside of this region turns, uh, turns out to this uh, uh, suboptimal condition uh, in these theorems. Okay. okay, thanks. This is it, my presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Insuk. Uh, so, yes. So if you have a question, okay. you can raise your hand. Well, I have a, I have a question. Uh -huh. let, let me check if I understood correctly. So in, in this picture that you're showing, uh, I understand that um, the time it takes to jump from one green line to another, it's uh, much slower than the one in which you go from uh, minus to uh, the top, to one of these columns. So is that correct? Ah, so minus from where? So uh, you have these columns. So I'm asking, well, the time it takes to jump from one of these columns, green columns to another green column. Uh -huh. Yes. So this yeah. time it's uh, much smaller than the time it takes to go from minus to the first column or the second column. Mm. Is this correct? So you jump among these uh, columns in very quickly. And uh, so it's, it's, it's really hard to, to answer. Uh, um, uh, yeah, can you, can you yeah. answer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in my opinion, they are comparable, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah comparable. I see. Yeah. I'm yeah. Thinking about the proof, but I'm yeah. I think that they but are I comparable. Understand you take a, you, you take a long time to go to the to the first green. Uh, it doesn't take so much time to get to the others, but there is there is a positive probability that you will never get there and you will get to the minus before. So for this reason, maybe the, the, the first time you get to the third column is comparable to the first time you get to the first column because of that. Yeah, for fixed K, yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, just one comment, I mean, in order to prove metastability, you don't need to show that the measure is concentrated on these um, on minus and pluses. You just need to show that you, you, well, you never in the path from minus to plus, you never reach this other region where maybe um, the measure it's uh, larger than the, um, the measure of these ground states. If you never reach, visit this region, you don't care about it. So maybe uh, the measure is not concentrated around the ground states, but mm -hmm. if you don't visit uh, the region in which um, the entropy makes the measure very large, mm -hmm. you don't need to care. I, I don't know if this is the case of this model, but um, well, it's the case in other models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but 
Yeah, what? Oh. What we can infer from this is maybe is that if uh, uh, if k is increasing faster than this one, so because that that's because there is a sharp threshold behavior. So if k is faster than this one, where alpha is equal to say one over two, so k is faster than e to the four or beta then. This is a major zero, which means, and we can indeed show that the major is concentrated on the other, other part. So now, and because of this competition between entropy and energy, the metastable uh, set is, will be, not be the, this energetic value. For example, mm -hmm. as you know, if beta is finite, but larger than this critical beta, then this empirical magnetization is concentrated on some, some number, which is not minus one and one, and strictly larger than minus one. So uh, what we showed here is uh, to find the exact location where this departure from minus one is open. And we showed that we want to show that before this departure, our argument uh, works completely, but Unfortunately, our work is a little bit suboptimal mm -hmm. because some technical reasons. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a, a question about this uh, one eight. So not about the one eight in particular, but the fact that it converges to a constant. So. Uh, usually, when you have this, this uh, long uh, path uh, on the on the energy landscape, the long uh, a long plateau, uh, somehow uh, I don't. I, I guess if you had only this, maybe you would you would have some 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 something that goes like k square because of the random walk you have to do on this plateau, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess there is some maybe there is some other place where you gain this factor k square, but I couldn't figure. Uh, okay, so what why is the reason that these things compensate? And uh, okay, and uh, yeah, it, there must be a, a a good reason because it compensates apparently in every dimension because you said in dimension three this is also the case. Mm -hmm. Let me show case uh, case care. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it is uh, very, uh, as far as I remember, it is very trivial region because uh, main, mainly because our dynamic is continuous time random walk. Yeah, if you are looking at discrete time, discrete time Markov chain, discrete time metropolis testing dynamics, uh, then you have a k scale factor. But here, since we look at the, we look at the, this continuous time dynamics, so that every site get the rate one clock. So in yes, some the, sense, our dynamic is speeded up by k scale. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that was the reason. Okay, yeah, I would have to think more about it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just speeded up the dynamics by you know, factor k square in, <laughs> in some sense. Do we have more questions? I think we have very young participants. Okay, okay. can I make a question? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so um, yeah. actually, uh, it's, it's not a very complicated question. So, so, so you use the, the, the metropolis um, traits for this uh, for this chain. Uh, sometimes uh, the, the Glauber uh, rates are uh, slightly uh, smoother and uh, uh, slightly easier to, to analyze. Uh, it, is that the case here, uh, is, or, or, or is basically the same thing? Uh? 
Excuse me. Okay, so so you uh, so your Marco Chen, you use the metropolis dynamics. So, mm -hmm. so you might also use uh, the, the global dynamic, which is, uh, is, is slightly different but uh, very similar. Mm -hmm. I think you, you might you you want to be more precise, Milton, because on the first slide. Uh, in soup presented metropolis as a particular case of Glauber. I think it is oh, okay, I see. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. So, so in, in the Glauber, instead of the, if, if they have taken the minimum, no, so so you take you take it proportional to, to the to, to this difference, no. So it's uh, it's uh, it's going to be basically so it with minus beta h. Sigma x divided by e to the minus beta h sigma x plus e to the minus beta h is going to be the right now in that case. So mm -hmm. that's what I call the global dynamics. So in which mm -hmm. you, you, you just erase the spin and you mm -hmm. put the, um, a new spin with the conditional measure. Yeah. Uh, oh, false. I've Drake mentioned that. Um, yeah, computation will be a little bit more complicated for that model just for technical reason, but. I believe that we can do the computation and the prefactor might be different, but the exponential order will be the same. Yeah, there is no special reason, but this dynamic is the most uh, sh simple in the study in, in, in the computation. So we selected this model. So indeed, we didn't select it. Neves and Schumann selected this dynamics because of that. Yeah. Okay, no, it's, it's just because sometimes the, the these other dynamics is um is uh is it, it, this other dynamics in some sense is smoother in the sense that uh, he, uh, the this function of uh, the minimum is not a differentiable function no mm -hmm. so when you take some some type of limits the, the other rates sometimes are, are are more convenient sometimes are less convenient it's, uh, it's uh, but, mm -hmm. but like you hear, hear is, in principle, it's going to be more or less the same, right? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do we have some more questions for Insuk? Okay, so I think we, we can all uh, thank Insuk again. Thank you very much for your nice talk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.